morning. It is so great to see you. Look around. Don't look at me, look around. This is the diocese, us gathered like this, and it's great, great to have you here in your cathedral. Uh, I also give thanks for a beautiful day. We've had some cathedral days that were not beautiful. I know this because I wound up in the dunking booth and I give great thanks today that there is no dunking booth at all. <laughs> but we're glad all of you are here. I do want to point out one unfortunate error in the booklet that you have, and that is uh, under St. Luke's Tacoma. It's not St. Luke's Tacoma. I'm not sure anybody from St. Luke's Tacoma is here. If they are, you can raise your hand now. But the people listed there are from St. Andrew's Tacoma, and I see them right back there. Let's give a shout out to them. Uh, we're sorry we uh, messed that up. Our office does know there's a St. Andrews and a St. Luke's in Tacoma, I can promise you. <laughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope and God is all to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal and ever gracious God, you blessed your servant Thurgood with grace and courage to discern and speak the truth. Grant that following this example, we may know you and recognize that we are all your children, brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, who teaches us to love one another, and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the book of Amos. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one that speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. But let justice roll down like the waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophesy, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. <clears throat> then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets 
and the best seats in the synagogues, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructor. For you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. The Gospel of the Lord. Our scriptures today challenge the very core of our beliefs and our behaviors. They are essentially a rebuke for the things we have done, our attitudes, pride, injustice, hatred, inaction. The prophet Amos tells us that there are those among us who hate others because they uphold justice while others who oppress the innocent, and even some who take bribes. He continues by telling us that we need to hate evil and love good, to maintain justice in the courts. In fact, he describes this by saying, let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. I found myself pausing at that line of scripture, and it reminded me, it took me to the imagery of a summer vacation that Doug and Melissa and I took when we made the decision to run the rapids. If you've never done that, I highly recommend that you consider it. It reminds me that this lovely imagery of this rolling river and this continuous flowing stream has whirlpools that make you go round and round. It has waterfalls that you need to be careful of, and oh, there are rocks. Rocks that you have to keep your wrap away from, or you find yourself in the waters, as some other boats on our trip did. We find that we experience the quietness and the rapidness and the roughness of the waters, but always they come to a place of calm. Crashing waves, the beauty of the waterfall, yet the fear of going over the edge. Perhaps you, like me, have had times in your life when you feel you are on the edge when you are the one in the midst of a situation that has to be moved to action, where you can no longer be silent because injustice is evident. In the midst of the raft, we were all in. You couldn't decide in that moment that you wanted out. The truth is we had a guide to direct us. And that's true for all of us in all aspects of our life. We have an eternal guide. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus continues this rebuke. 
by encouraging the people and his disciples to do and observe everything the scribes and Pharisees are telling them. However, he cautions them not to do it the way they do. This is a redirect. The Ten Commandments are based on two of the greatest principles, reverence and respect. Reverence for God, for God's name, for God's day, for the parents that God has given us. Respect for a person's life, a person's possessions, one's personality, one's name, one's very self. These principles are eternal. We know the Ten Commandments. We've heard these. They're not surprises to us. His rebuke, though, is in the moment. It's for what the Pharisees have become, not for what they know. Jesus points out that the way that they dress and the way that they act is to draw attention to themselves as though the Holy One was missing. The whole design of the Christian should be to get ourselves out of the way, which allows the glory to go to God. Today we celebrate an incredible churchman, an incredible Supreme Court justice, an incredible Christian Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall said this, each of you as an individual must pick your own goals. Listen to others, but do not become a blind follower. Do not wait for others to move out. Move out yourself. Where you see wrong or inequality or injustice, speak out because this is your country. Sounds a little like Jesus' conversation, doesn't it? In a few moments, we will be saying our baptismal covenant in which we will commit ourselves to resist evil, to repent when we sin, to proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ, as if all that isn't enough, we continue and are asked to commit ourselves to seek and serve Christ in all persons and to strive for justice and peace. And finally, to respect the dignity of every human being. It's a tall order. It's the commitment of our faith, of our church. And we all respond by saying this. I will, with God's help. At least we are smart enough to realize that in and of ourselves we cannot do this alone. In the New Testament lesson, this chapter from 1 Corinthians is referred to as the love chapter. In fact, it is one of the most typical scriptures chosen for marriages. It's actually a rebuke to the church. It illustrates that for us, what real love needs to be, not what we think it should be. This chapter is timeless. It crosses all generations. It's, it applies to us and to every generation. It's accessible. It doesn't matter the time frame. It addresses the core characteristics of what it means to be a Christian. And these things don't change, no matter what. To be a follower of Christ is to take a stand on the values of faith, hope, and love, with love prevailing above all else. This chapter addresses themes of integrity as well as the heart. Paul is saying that we need to use love as the driving characteristic behind what motivates us to action. Actions without love are meaningless, he says. The idea is that with Christ in our lives, our behavior will naturally take on positive characteristics that reflect the Christ through our lives. Love in this chapter is not solely an emotion. It is not a feel-good, but it is our actions that we should show towards other people. To love all others, to, to get to the core of what Christ intended for our lives, the very essence and purpose of the life of Jesus. We can apply this to our lives by thinking about our intentions and motives behind our actions, particularly if we and when we are in positions of authority and power. 
How do we use that authority? How do we use the power that we've been given? To take on a Christ-like attitude in all areas of our lives is to show love in every aspect of our lives, whether we work in the corporate world, in the church, or simply as followers of God. We should make sure that we are expressing genuine care in our actions for the people that surround us on a daily basis. Many times we are gracious and loving to those outside our home and we are the most abusive to those who live within the walls of our homes. Paul cites 15 characteristics of love in this chapter. Patience, oh that's hard for some of us. Kindness, no jealousy. Love doesn't brag and it's not arrogant. It doesn't act unbecomingly and it doesn't seek its own. It's not for its own glory. Love isn't provoked. It never flies into a temper. It does not store up the memory of wrongs. That one alone will get many of us. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, endures all things. Paul has three final things to say about this Christian love. He says there is absolute permanency. In Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 7, we read, Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. Love is the one unconquerable thing. He says it is absolute completeness. Our minds can only grasp it in part, for the finite can never grasp the infinite. The way of love will lead us in the end to a day when the veil is drawn aside and we see face to face and know even as we are known. And finally, Paul says there is absolute supremacy. As great as faith and hope, our love is still greater. Love is the fire that kindles faith, and it is the light that turns hope into certainty. Thurgood Marshall said this, in recognizing the humanity of our fellow beings, we pay ourselves the highest tribute. He went on to say, democracy just cannot flourish amid fear. Liberty cannot bloom amid hate. Justice cannot take root amid rage. In the chill climate in which we live, we must go against the prevailing wind. We must dissent because America can do better, because America has no choice but to do better. As Christians, neither do we. In the words of another master, do or do not, there is no try. So, before we start, sponsors and everyone, you, you practiced before and I was told that it went off swimmingly. <laughs> and then we tried to stuff all of you in this room and it didn't work anything like we planned. So this is the Episcopal Church at work. I mean, you know, it's good. Uh, so I know that you are all over this room, even though you had planned to be right here. Don't worry. We're going to find you. If you think I'm coming to an end, you just jump up and yell, okay? And we will get everybody presented, all right? Okay, now I think we can start. The candidates will now be presented. Oh, let's go down. Now this will not happen with every uh, body, but at Trinity Everett, they've started this thing where 
before they can get confirmed. I did not start this. <laughs> you should blame your rector, all right? But I think that it's a great idea. They are ask a question. And I just want to tell you, these questions, I'm glad that usually I'm given the answer because I would flunk them myself, I think. But, but don't be nervous, all right? All right. <laughs> Who's first? She timidly pulls it out. This is the question. The Protestant Reformation occurred against the backdrop of several significant historical and social challenges that ultimately influenced the shape of the reform movements. What are the two basic movements within the Reformation and name four environmental influences of the Reformation <laughs> period? So these are like general ordination exams. <laughs> Even if you get close, I'll be happy, so go ahead. Yes. You did it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Here, frame that. You should frame that. That's good. These have also been hermetically sealed, so uh, let's see. Question, what historical document outlines four characteristics of Anglican identity that form the basis of entering relationships with other Christian denominations? Chicago, Chicago. Yeah, that's it. I wonder how you got that. That's great. <laughs> Any of those four characteristics? Mm -hmm. Frame it. You did great. All right. There's a, many more questions in this basket, so whoever's next uh, to be presented on the <laughs> Question, who was the first Holy Roman Emperor? What were three of his, con well, let me finish. <laughs> what were three of his contributions to the development of the early church? Uh, Constantine. Mm-hmm. Attic in Milan, mm -hmm. in which uh, Christianity was, was criminalized. Mm -hmm. The out, the out Mm -hmm. in, but he kept in hanging. Ah, yes, he had to keep something yeah, in there, right? Yeah, he had to keep something. Yeah. Uh, got rid of one, kept the other. Uh, third, Constantine built the uh, Constantinopolis. Yes, frame it. Way to go. Is that it? All right. Yes. I'm going to go back up here, and then you present. Go ahead. From Trinity Episcopal Church Everett, I present Kieran Baird, Diana Baudelaire, and Jill Morrison for confirmation. Thank you. From Christ Church, Seattle, I present Barbara Alfeo, Nick Alfeo, Jessica Escott, and Ellen Hurleyberg for confirmation. I present Catherine Elizabeth Myers and Robert Van Winkle to be received into this communion. Thank you. From St. John San Juan in Olympia, I present Cole Douglas McMason for confirmation. And Nancy Hollister Mason, who desires to confirm her baptism Thank you. Why don't you all be seated? I know they probably tell you to stand, but just rest. I'll tell you when to stand back up. How about that? From St. Paul's Church, Seattle, I present Mike Oliver. 
we receive into this communion. Thank you. From St. Matthew Brown's Point, Tacoma, I present Lisa Daisy Jasmine Lane for confirmation. Very good. Thank you. From St. Paul's in Bellingham, I present Zora Rochelle Carter, Elizabeth Ann Cole for confirmation. I present Rachel Rowe Bain, Pam Bolton, Donna Cornell Cluthley, Deborah Jane Steinham to be received into this community. Thank you. Great, the ferry was full this morning. That's fantastic. From St. Dunstan's Shoreline, I present Tina Dolman for confirmation. Start moving around because I know that. Lady Guadalupe Alberto, I present Guadalupe Sanchez, Monica Yesenia Mora, and Alisa Ogini. 
Thank you. Here. Oh, wait, right here. <coughs> Vancouver's right here. All Saints Vancouver, we present Kenneth Callan, Lisa Callan Farrell, who received the commission. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, over here. Thank you. St. Mark's Cathedral in Seattle. I present Amos B. Cameron C. Charles Calvert, Natalia Morales C. and to me, Ben Ricardo. I present Courtney Wendell Stevenson, and Marjorie Okay. St. James Kent, stand up. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else that we have missed? Okay. I would like the candidates that were presented only to stand. I would say if you've come to other cathedral days, this is by far uh, the largest turnout we've had since we resumed. And this is the largest pool of candidates we've had. There was about 110 people uh, to be confirmed or received or reaffirmed today. Yeah. We're also live streaming this event, so be careful what you're doing. <laughs> I can tell you from experience, they pan the audience, okay? Be careful. This question is for all of you that were presented. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I invite all those present to stand as you are able. This question is for you. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? believe in God the Holy Spirit. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's 
Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You are, uh, the congregation, welcome to sit. Those of you that have been presented, uh, you need to come up this way. And this is that moment I was telling you about. We're going to make a circle around the altar, and everybody's going to be watching us to see if we can pull that off. You did well. That went so much smoother than last year, I just want to tell you. It was fantastic. As they come forward, I want to uh, say a little bit about this. They heard me talk about this back there with them before we came in. Uh, it's become a tradition for me when I confirm people to lay hands on their head and leave silence for them to contemplate and meditate what they're doing today. and the long, long line that they are in, all the way back to the apostles of pilgrims and Christians who have done this. But with 110, if I did that, we would be here until Tuesday. So uh, we don't do that at this service. Instead, we jointly uh, gather around the altar and we will be in silence for a few minutes for that very thing to be contemplated and prayed about and thought about. And then I will make my way around the circle. And if those that are the candidates can actually stand on the bottom level and sponsors behind them, uh, that'll work better. You don't have to do it now, but maybe as we go around there. And I know there's a lot of us up here, but that's a good problem to have. So we will now uh, just enter into a time of silence together.
think we made it. Is there, any, is there anyone in the circle where it did not happen for them? I just want to make sure. All right. It was a beautiful crowd. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. You'll all make your way back to your seats. We'll continue with our meal and then with more food and fun following. Good afternoon. I want to welcome you to St. Mark's Cathedral, your cathedral, and what a happy day in the life of this diocese and in the Episcopal Church of Western Washington. We are so glad that you're here. Would you acknowledge once again all those who have been confirmed, received, or reaffirmed their vows today? I also want to say a word of thanks to all who have made possible this day all of the planning and preparation and execution and welcoming, and especially to people 
Virginia Linker, whom I hope you'll say hi and thanks to uh, as part of your festivities following the service. She has uh, been all the planning, uh, central uh, planning for this, and we're so grateful for Virginia. And then to Michael Sewer, the Cathedral Sacristan, for uh, helping make all this uh, service come across. Will you, will you recognize those two? Lots more festivities following the service. There's a, a lineup of all of that uh, on your back page of your service leaflet. I want to commend that all to you. If you uh, don't have one of these, you need one if you're going to get service from the food trucks. You can do so at the registration table following the service. We do turn to the liturgy of the table now, and we want you to know all of you, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. You are welcome at God's table. At the appointed time, the ushers will guide you either here to the front of the platform or to the rear of the platform. Uh, each of the bread baskets will also have gluten-free rice wafers. Just make that known to the person presenting the bread for you if you so need it. Uh, there's an opportunity for um, uh, to just go with the chaos of, of, of this flow. So just trust the ushers to get you where you need to go in that. It'll be good. Our offering today is to Christosol, and I want to call on the bishop to first say welcome to him and his seat here, uh, but to also offer more information about Christosol and how we are asked to support it today. Let's uh, thank the dean and the people of St. Mark's for hosting us today. Thank you. I don't see the choir up there. Maybe they were relieved of their duties. Oh, they're over here. They, they've been really working hard. Let's thank them. They did a great job. So, yes, our offering will go to Christosol. As some of you are aware that I serve on the board of Christosol. Uh, we also have as a diocese a companion relationship with the Diocese of El Salvador, uh, where it is uh, focused. Uh, we've expanded now to Guatemala and Honduras, which are the center of the great migration that's occurring now. This cathedral, your cathedral, is a sanctuary cathedral, and at this very hour and in these days, we have a person living on this property, living in sanctuary. That's what we're doing on this end of the problem. And Christosol is working on the other end of the problem. And so I urge you to give generously because they are working diligently and in a lot of danger in El Salvador uh, to uh, help with this problem. So that's where our offering today will go in thanksgiving for the lives we have here and the ability that we have to be generous uh, to other parts of the world. Um, I want to reiterate what the Dean said, that everybody is welcome at this table, uh, wherever you are in your journey of faith, so please come forward for that. I want to try something uh, at the end of the service that is going to be a monumental task, and that is to try to take a group picture of all the people that were confirmed. <laughs> For this to work, you cannot dawdle. When the uh, service is over, I'm going to come right back up to where I'm standing, and we're going to do the best we can to do that. If you're not here, you won't be in it. So <laughs> turn around and come up here. And after, the sir, after that's over, I'm going to be back at that desk to sign books, uh, registers from congregations, anything you want within reason that you would like me to do. <laughs> All right? We will take other pictures that you want also. I'll stay around and do that for any of you that want to do that as well. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us that at, to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May Almighty God, who enlightened the minds of the disciples by pouring out upon them the Holy Spirit, make you rich with his blessing, that you may abound more and more in that spirit forever. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>